Hey guys, welcome to Samco Workshop. This is Jason. Today we're going to talk about this Toyota Tacoma with the front end explodes on this thing. Uh, it's gone viral. Everybody's seen it. TFL bought that new uh, truck. They bought that new Tacoma TRD off-road and in just in some snow and ice a little bit, they end up blowing apart the front diff on there. Um, and, uh, and this is to be expected, okay? Now, everybody knows that I don't like the new Toyota. Okay, I'm not a fan of the new Tacoma, and I'm not a fan of the company Toyota um, and their allegation only and how they do things. But this is not a fault of that truck, and it's not a fault of the drivers at TFL at all. It's a fault of the reality of the world we live in today, and we have to understand that. Okay, Every vehicle today is done differently than what it used to be. We always had suppliers in the past and things of that nature, but when you look at a manufactured vehicle, let's just say that on that, let's say that... Uh, 200 parts of that vehicle 200 components that make that vehicle up toyota doesn't make those they buy them from a supplier they are supplied by a supplier of each of those parts each of those 200 parts and i'm just ballparking so let's say here that we got 200 parts that come in that, that make this up of those 200 those are made up by more suppliers that supply parts for that part, which are made up of more parts that those suppliers get from other people that make up those parts. So when you calculate this and compound it, it's thousands of parts made by different people that make up these vehicles. And there's no way for Toyota or any manufacturer today to be able to keep up with that when it comes to quality control. And then on top of that, all the suppliers, and including people at Toyota, including people at Chevy, and at Ford, and at uh, Ram, and at every dealership, all, basically everybody in the automotive industry right here, they suck at their job. Okay, they straight up suck at this. They don't care about quality control. They don't care about any of this stuff. They don't care about reputation. If they did, we wouldn't have Ford with 30 recalls a year. Toyota right now has got more recalls than they've ever had in history on old Tacomas, on new Tacomas, on Tundras, on all kinds of things they got going on. You got Chevy that's got a stop sale on their vehicles. Can't buy a Colorado right now. They got recalls on all their stuff. You got Jeeps that were uh, stop sale on the manuals for almost a year. Okay, this goes on and on. It's industry-wide. Why? Because everybody sucks at their job. Okay, Nobody does anything right. A supplier, Toyota, they don't look for quality anymore. Neither does Ford, GM, or any of these guys. When they need a part, when they need a, uh, for example, let's say a front diff, Okay, like what happened on Toyota. Toyota doesn't pick the best one. They're calling around and their bean counters go for who can supply it as cheap as possible. And then those people that do it cheap as possible, they, like everybody else, suck at their job. And then the suppliers that that cheap as possible one uses to get to supply their components, they suck at their jobs too. So it's a combination of people sucking at what they do really bad and then building a vehicle that sucks. Okay, It's the world we live in today. There's no way around it. It just is what it is. I told you guys before that new Tacoma will now meet American standards. Okay, why? Because it's only sold in America. Why would Toyota put the energy and the effort they do in the Hilux and make it the quality of what the Hilux is when they can charge a fortune for it here, build it as cheap as possible, and we'll go goo goo gaga over it because it looks different. Okay, that's the world we live in, and these manufacturers know that, and otherwise it wouldn't be this way. We've heard Ford CEOs talk about how we're going to fix the quality control. Quality control is going to be better yet, for three, three, three straight years, Ford quality control has just went literally like this, down. Okay, it's gone. There's nothing quality about a Ford anymore whatsoever. They, in three years, they basically cut their own head right off is what they did. Um, and all these other ones are doing it too. It's, it's the reality of how things are. That's the world we live in. But in a defense of Toyota, and we'll also use a Colorado as an example, okay, Remember this. This is the rule that is not new. We've known this for the last 30 years of cars. This is the rule. First two years of any new vehicle, don't get it. It sucks. Okay, It's, it's bad. It's going to have problems. There are going to be bugs and kinks that worked out. Why? Because they can't test it in real world. They can put it on a dyno and they can run it around a track a few times and they can do certain things and they can roll it over an obstacle and they can take it out to the desert and have some people run it and that's all fine and dandy. But it doesn't take into account what normal everyday people are going to do with it. And like with this Tacoma, how that happened, Whatever testing they did, it didn't do a certain thing, and then now we have that issue. 
okay? It's like back in the day when people would build, they think they build the best, uh, the best knife in the world and they got this heat treat and everything is great. Then somebody takes that knife and they throw it and it hits the side of a, it hits a tree sideways and bing, the vibration blows it into pieces. Nobody thought about that. Why? Because they didn't test it that way. Okay, that's the kind of stuff that happens here. They cannot, they cannot test it for all of the real world stuff that's going to happen to it. So during the first two years, these trucks get put out on the market. They get used by normal people in everyday scenarios. Some good, some not so good, some dumb, some great, some uh, push it over the limit, some are not. But they put it in all these weird everyday scenarios and everyday things that people do. That's when these issues start popping up. Like the Colorado. Do you think Chevy at any one time said, I wonder if this could go through a car wash without denting the roof? No, they would have never thought about that. Why? Because they never did. But then it just happens to be that the new Colorado's got such a weird angle on that roof, right where it hits on there, and it's just a little weak right there, and they got these variables that that automatic car wash wheel, when it hits it, it can put a little dent in there. Okay? It happens. Will it ever happen again? No. Uh, Chevy, uh, Chevy fixed it. They're like, nope, we won't let that happen. We'll fix the ones that happen to people, and all the new ones are now fully reinforced up there. It'll never happen again. It is a fluke. It is a weird scenario. This kind of stuff happens in the first couple of years. Does that mean that the new Tacoma is a bad truck and that this isn't going to work? No. Well, again, Toyota is very slow to make changes. So hopefully they, they don't act that way and they recall the ones that are out there and they fix whatever issue is because there's not that many of them on a lot yet or being sold yet. So hopefully they find out what that problem was in that diff that went down and then they are going to recall these Toyotas, fix it, solve it, and then put them back out there rather than let everybody that's got a first year or two be screwed while they go get it. They, they work on it and then come out and then the, the 2025 Tacoma or 2026 Tacoma no longer has that issue and anybody that spent 50 grand on a 2024 is, is basically left shafted. Hopefully that's not what they do. But the point being, this is to be expected. It doesn't mean that that truck is bad. It just means that it was outside of the realm of something they tested. Yes, it should have been tested that way. This shouldn't. This this diff should not have come apart with them just simply spinning those front wheels on that snowy conditions. There's no reason this should have happened. Okay, it should have been built way better than this. Hopefully, they will learn and get it fixed. But there are a lot of variables in here. And if you own Toyota or you were CEO at Toyota and you heard about this, you would have never expected this because you would have expected the supplier to have this thing been tested, proven, and done. He would have been, and then when that crap rolls downhill, he's going to go after this guy because he thought he did it, but this guy's going to go after this guy, and it just snowballs. But it goes nowhere. It just, it just does this in a big circle, and we, the consumer, are not even in it. We're over here. We're not even in this circle. We get no benefit from it. Okay, this is the world we live in. This is how things are. Don't fault this Toyota for that. And again, it's coming from a guy who would never own that Toyota. I think it's an overpriced joke of a truck. But the point is, this stuff is real. Okay, this happens. This is not something new. Look at when the brand new Bronco came out and everybody was so excited. Now all the, all the valves started shooting out of the thing. Motors were gone and people were telling them that it's going to be a year before you get parts for it. Okay, people, a lot of people don't remember that. Okay, I almost bought a brand new Bronco when that was going down. Okay, look at again all the things that happen with every one of these manufacturers. First couple years of a vehicle is bad. It's also why I made that video on the new Colorado, how it kind of came out with like glowing, amazing, top-notch. They knocked it out of the park on the first year because it had very few major issues. It was phenomenal out of the gate. Um, but when we look at this, don't, don't let that thing steer you away from that Tacoma if you want it. Like I said, I try to steer you away from it because I think it's overpriced. And I think the quality and reliability of that thing is nowhere near what a, an old Tacoma was. But if you are interested in that truck, do not let that one little mistake be your deciding factor on it. Toyota hopefully will get that resolved. And this is normal everyday issues in the world we live in with manufacturers today. And it's not Toyota's fault. It just snowballs through the whole cycle. And it is what it is. And it's just, but like I said, hopefully Toyota will rectify it, get it solved, and it won't be an issue anymore. Is it sad to see? Yes, it is. Is it a bummer? Yes, it is. Was it kind of funny watching a brand new truck fit? You know, now they got theirs at $45,000.
because Toyota does the allocation systems. They had to drive all the way to Texas from Colorado to find one in the country that was that price. Everything, because you can't order one. They tell you starting MSRP at this for a TRD off-road, 45 grand. You can't find those trucks because you can't order one. Toyota will only give the dealers what they want to give them. Very rare day you're going to see a $45,000 TRD off-road. Most likely they're going to be 50 grand. That's a ridiculous price for a truck. Was it funny to watch a truck that most people are going to have to pay 50 grand for on a snowy road, turn the front wheels at a slow speed and pop a, a, blow the diff apart? Yes, it was kind of funny. Is it sad? Yes, it is. Will it be fixed? Yes, it will. Should it change your opinion of things? I don't think so. But give it a little time for this truck to get some of those bugs worked out before you go diving in and spending kind of that kind of money is my opinion on it. Hopefully Toyota will make it right. But this is my thoughts on the process. But we got to understand where it comes from. We live in a time where everything is a wreck right now. Okay, I could go through my news feed and I can see recalls from every single manufacturer on it. My news feed on my phone is set up for me to have every day. I get That's all it is. When I go to my actual Google news feed and I, create, and I click on here, you can see it here. It's just a, my news feed is nothing but cars and trucks and everything related to all that stuff. And I scan that stuff every single day, multiple times a day. I know everything that's going on out there and this stuff. It's what I do for a living. It's part of my job. And I'm telling you, this is nothing nor or abnormal. This is the new normal with what we deal with today by the way cars are made. Every manufacturer out there is building a piece of crap that looks sexy, that is overpriced, underbuilt, made with the cheapest parts possible, and that's the world we live in today. Don't don't expect any better. And for 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 everything out there, for the love of God, don't think that Toyota what they were in the past is what they will be in the future. They will not. Toyota now is an American standard vehicle with the Tacoma, the Tundra, the Sequoia. None of those vehicles are sold anywhere else in the world where they won't tolerate that stuff. We as Americans, we tolerate that. We'll put up with it. We'll pay top dollar for it as long as it looks sexy. And that's what we're getting here. And so now all manufacturers are done the same way. Cheapest as possible by people that suck at their job. And we pay top dollar for it. That's what it boils down to. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.